Successful seed starting has been one of the most important skills that I've had to master in order to be able to grow as much food as possible on my quarter acre homestead. And honestly, it's taken me three years and a lot of failure to get this right. Seedling success every time boils down to four critical factors that I'll cover in this video. From creating the right germination conditions to making your own seed raising mix and sowing at the right time. So if you're a beginner gardener or struggling with seed germination, then keep watching for my fail proof method as I get my plants ready for spring. Seeds need the right levels of water, light and heat to germinate and grow well. So if you want to ensure good germination and healthy plants, then you're going to need to work out how you're going to control these conditions. In terms of water, this is pretty easy. You just want to make sure that your seed raising mix stays moist, but not wet. In order to control heat and light, in my mind, there are three options. If the temperature is right outside, then you can sow your seeds outdoors. But if it's too cold or hot or windy or wet, then you can grow indoors, either next to a windowsill or under some grow lights, or you could even grow in a greenhouse. Actually, there is a fourth option, which I'll discuss in a minute. So how do you work out what's right for you? Start with the needs of your seeds. What seeds are you growing and what temperature do they need to germinate? If you're sowing lettuce and it's 10 to 20 degrees outside, then you can sow them outside. If you're sowing tomatoes, which is a warmth loving crop and it's freezing outside, then you're gonna need to start them indoors. But in terms of a rule of thumb of what to expect, if you live in a cold climate, then you're probably gonna be starting your seeds indoors most of the time. If you live in a temperate climate like me, then you're probably gonna be sowing your seeds in spring and late winter indoors but the rest of the year you can probably sow them outdoors. And if you live in a subtropical or tropical environment, then you can probably get away with sowing your seeds outdoors most of the time, and maybe just a few warmth loving crops you might need to sow indoors in winter. Now, if you're considering investing in a greenhouse like this one, hold your horses. I think there is a cheaper option. I love my greenhouse, but to be honest, there's a lot of the year where I don't use it, and it takes up a lot of space. If I was gonna start a garden from scratch, this is probably what I would use. A cold frame is basically a tiny greenhouse that's just big enough to put your plants into and so it's a lot cheaper to buy or make. So if you use a cold frame, I want to know, do you think it's better than a greenhouse? One issue I've run into in the past is sowing my seeds too early. Last year I sowed my tomato seeds about a month too early and then because they were getting too big for their pots, I had to plant them out whilst it was still too cold. And they grew well at first, but then as they started to flower and set fruit, that's when the disease really started to set in. Fortunately, I had planted a batch of seeds a month later and those tomatoes did a lot better. So to avoid this issue, this year I've done a garden plan. I know what I'm planting, where I'm planting it and when I'm going to plant it out. And from there I can work backwards to when I need to sow the seeds and how many seeds I'm going to need of each plant. So the time between sowing to planting out in the garden will vary between crops, but I'd say generally as a rule of thumb allow between four to six weeks. And if you're going to be potting on some of your plants into bigger pots before they go out into the garden, then maybe allow eight weeks. In order to work out when it's going to be the right conditions to plant out each crop in your garden, like say, when's it going to be warm enough to plant out my tomatoes, I think the best thing you can do is talk to local gardeners in your area and ask them. So I reckon having the right ingredients for your seed starting makes all the difference for success. And it doesn't have to be complicated or fancy, but these are my essentials. The first is fresh, quality seeds from a reputable company. And this is really gonna help with good germination and healthy plants. And the reason I say fresh is because you don't want your seeds to be too old. And I didn't realize this in the beginning, but this is especially important for some crops like onions and leeks, whose seeds only really stay viable for one year to maybe two years. And I've had frustrating moments trying to germinate onions, not knowing what I was doing wrong, only to find out that the seeds that the company sold me were too old. The second thing is quality seed raising mix. You can either buy it or you can make your own. I make mine from homemade compost and the way I do it is really simple. I just sift mature compost that's at least six months old through an A-frame sifter and often that's all I do. It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. Sometimes I will add some coconut coir, which is ground up coconut husks, because that helps a little bit with moisture retention, but in my opinion, it's not essential. Now, if you find yourself with a bunch of seedlings that are looking sad and in seed raising mix that hasn't got enough nutrients, the best solution I've found is just to liquid feed them with fish emulsion. So now we're gonna go back in time a couple of weeks and I'm gonna show you my process and technique for how I start all my seedlings. Chuck, shut up. Fine on set, chooks. First thing you're gonna need is some trays or some pots. These are the ones I'm using, which I'm gonna talk about in a sec. Seeds, 
seed raising mix, some kind of labels, and of course some water. So there's lots of different options for trays and pots that you can use to start your seeds. You're not always gonna be able to fit all your plants in one type of tray. Basically, you wanna think about what different things you wanna grow and how big the seeds are that you're gonna be sowing and how big the plants are gonna get before you put them in the ground. The tray that I use the most is this tray here, a 72 cell windstrip tray. It's kind of a good all round size for most things. It works really well because it's got slits down the side. The slits in the side of the pot prevent the roots from circling and so it doesn't get root bound and so you get a nice healthy root bowl in the plant. This is a bit of a bigger tray, and so I use this to start things like cucurbits, so pumpkins and cucumbers. These are some pumpkin seeds that I've saved from home here, and as soon as they germinate, the plant is already quite big, so it takes up quite a bit of space, even in its first few weeks of growth. When you fill your seed tray, you wanna make sure that you're avoiding there being any air pockets in there, but you don't wanna really squish it in there so that it's compacted. So just firmly packed in, the fastest way I've found to fill these windstrip trays is just to pile on a bunch of seed raising mix, more than you think you'll need. Spread it out like this until all, all the holes are evenly covered. And then you just come along and you press your fingers down into each of the holes and you just go along and do that for all of them. And that way you make sure that there's no air pockets in there and it's all evenly filled. Once I've done that, I just want to cover it over to the top, smooth it over like that with my hands. And you see when you give it a bang, all of the gaps in between the cells, all the soil falls out and then you're done. So the key to being able to do this quickly is to just make sure that your seed raising mix has the right moisture level. You want it to be moist, but you don't want it to be wet. So I've filled all my trays and I've marked out where I'm gonna put all my seeds with my little markers. So now I'm gonna sow all of my seeds, but first I have to make a little hole in each of the cells, which makes it easier to drop the seed in. It's better to have more seedlings than you need, in my opinion, because it means that you can pick the best. So if you've got a couple of dodgy ones, you can just pick the strongest. With the smaller seeds like celery and celeriac, they can be tricky to germinate, and so I like to sow a lot of them in one tray. And once they've germinated, I'll separate them into their own cells. Now that all the seeds are in, I'm lightly covering them with a bit more seed raising mix and watering them in. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you did, give it a like, and if you want more content like this, then subscribe.